Hey everybody and welcome back to Spanish for Gringos. My name is Mark and this is lesson seven, conjugating AR verbs. Now in Spanish, um, there are three types of verbs. There are verbs that end in AR, verbs that end in ER, and verbs that end in IR. Today we're just gonna be covering the basics of the AR verb. Um, I've got a couple of examples on the board and if you've been following uh, the videos before, you'll remember I said that in the Spanish language, each verb has on average 130 variations of the, the verb. Well, in today's lesson, I'm gonna be going over three basic tenses uh, of more practical use. Uh, the goal of this channel and the goal of um, these videos is to teach you to fluently speak Spanish from scratch to uh, a fluent level in basically three months. I know to do that and these lectures are going to be oriented like a classroom. If I were to take a standard classroom approach, approach I would teach every single type of verb, start with regular verbs, transition to irregular verbs, uh, um, touch on stem changes and, and, and root endings, indicatives, how to change the rules for changing indicatives. It's a bunch of boring shit, okay? You don't need to know it, okay? It'd be nice to, uh, to, to learn this, the, uh, you know, if you want to speak it on, on some sort of mastery level, but let's just face it, you're probably here because you want to learn how to speak Spanish, how to understand it uh, fluently, comprehensible, um, and a limited amount of time. So, without any further ado, the, I'm going to get right into the lesson. Um, a, a few little rules of engagement here is uh, right now, um, alluding back to previous uh, lessons, of course we're dealing with the subject, right, is, is I, you, he or she, we or they. Um, and the subjects never change when you're conjugating verbs. Uh, and then we're also, so we deal with the subjects and then we deal with the tense, the tense uh, being either past, present, or future. Now, in English and Spanish, they have all of these fucked up fancy names, prepositions, um, irregular verbs, regular verbs, subjunctive, uh, perfect, imperfect, continuous, conditional. It just, the list goes on and it's a little baffling to think back to, you know, grade five or six grammar and remember the definitions for all of these rules. So I'm going to simplify it. I have my own terms that uh, basically are self-explanatory. So um, the past in literature, um, I believe they call it preterite, but I, everybody knows what past is. So we're going to leave it past. Now, continuous or present continuous, we're just gonna leave it at present. And then, you know, future, there's different variations of future. Um, there's, there's perfect or simple future. Um, that's dealing with things like will, something that's going to happen, it's, it's, it's uh, definitive. So I like to call it definitive because it's self-explanatory. When someone's definitive, it means it's one thing, it's one thing only, it, it's, it, it, it is. So we're gonna leave it at infinitive. And then and in a future lesson, we're gonna talk about conditional. And conditional um, tenses would be like could, should, or would. Um, so there's not enough room on the board to get into that. And I'm just gonna keep it simple. Uh, simple past, simple present, simple future, or definitive. Um, so we've got uh, four examples of AR verbs on the board. We've got hablar, Llegar, and you can't see it at the bottom right now, but nadar, and um, I forgot to write it in. <laughs> Let's go with the, the infamous estar, which is the temporary version of to be, which we've covered in a different lesson. So right now we're going to, we're going to start with hablar. So hablar, um, three simple tenses, past, present, and future. Um, and um, just a, a reminder, um, hablar is the verb to speak in Spanish. So when I say I speak, I don't say I to speak, and hablar literally means to speak. So we have to change the ending so it's not to speak anymore. We have to change it so it, it will make sense and fit with each of the subjects. So we won't be saying I to speak, we want to say I speak. So therefore, we change the ending and we conjugate it for the, the five different subjects. So starting with present, um, 
the, the, the correct conjugation for I, I speak, is hablo. You know, I speak. Yo hablo español. I speak Spanish. Uh, pretty shit simple. In the past, I spoke, it already happened, is hablé. Hablé. And you notice this uh, little funny accent. Uh, I'm going to cover all the accents and correct pronunciations in the next lesson. But I'm just going to uh, say for now, when you see an accent over a letter, it's telling you two things. It's telling you um, how the sound changes. Uh, and when I mean the sound changes, I mean the sound always sounds the same, but it will be the emphasis will change. So, so when you see an accent, it basically means you need to emphasize that word and it actually changes it to a different word because when you hear the sound of it, you can hear the, 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 the differences between the vowels when, there's, when you accentuate it more, when there's more emphasis. Okay, <clears throat> so past, hablé, future, hablaré. It sounds a lot like hablé, but you've got the, they, they put back the, uh, the, the two into it, the, the, the hablar. So it's hablaré. It means to speak in the future. You know, um, I will speak because it's definitive. So I will speak is hablaré. You, present, you speak, you speak. Tú hablas. Or you can just drop the two because uh, it's um, hablas is indicative of the second person. So you could just say hablas, hablas muy bien. You speak very good. So remember in Spanish, um, these the subject can easily be replaced by a subject by a subject pronoun. And the subject pronoun in this case will be hablas because it literally means you, the second person, speak. So it's it's your preference. There's it's correct. You can say tú hablas, or you can say hablas. The main reason why someone would include two is to put emphasis on it. Like in one case, you're saying you speak very well, hablas muy bien, and if you want to emphasize it, you will say tú hablas muy bien. You speak very well. It's, it's just putting emphasis on it. El or ella or usted uh, habla in the present form. They speak, they speak well, they speak like shit, whatever. Habló, he spoke. Um, el habló muy fuerte. He spoke very strong or very strongly. El or ella hablará. He or she speaks, will speak. He, he or she will speak. Um, he or she will speak later. No, él o ella um, hablará más tarde. They will speak later. Nosotros, nosotros hablamos. Now, you notice in all of these examples, it's the same for past and the present. In air verbs, when they're conjugating the past version of we and the present version of we, it's the same. So you might ask yourself, well, how do you tell when you see um, hablamos that they're, they're referring to the present that we speak or we spoke? And the answer to that would be the other words that are in the sentence that would give the indicator, like last night we spoke. So an example of it already happened would be anoche uh, nos hablamos muy amable. We, we spoke very good. And um, they, ellos, ellas, ustedes, hablaron, they spoke in the past, they speak right now, hablan. Uh, they speak now, ellos hablan ahora, they speak now, hablarán, they speak, they will speak in the future, ellos hablarán en la mañana, they will speak tomorrow in the morning. Okay, the next AR verb, llegar, to arrive. Now, 
I know someone's spotted it out already, so I'll just address it right now. Why the fuck is the U in there? Why, why change it? There's no U in your guy. Um, this quick, sh simple answer to that, which I won't explain in great detail, is it's called a stem change. And stem change happens, and it happens in English as well. You just don't really know where to realize it. Um, actually, a stem change happens in English too, but you may not be aware of it. Um, maybe just something that you've just committed to memory and you just know how to say properly or how to conjugate properly. That usually happens a lot of uh, background learning um, that we just, we just know something. And I'll give you an example of that is how do you know to say an elephant or a table? Why isn't it, why isn't it a elephant and why is it an table? Well, I didn't really know until a couple of years ago I actually looked it up. And maybe I did know at some point in time, but I forgot it. But if something starts with a vowel in English, it's an. And if it's a consonant, uh, it's a, you know, for a table or a cup of coffee. But if it's something like an orange, it's an orange or an apple. So much like the same in, in Spanish, um, what a stem change is, is the spelling of the, the conjugate, the new conjugation of the, of the, what this is called, the base verb is called the indicative. Changing the spelling of the indicative depends on how the indicative is spelled. So depending on the combination of letters that are, uh, are making up the indicative will depend on the conjugation for yo and a few others, um, the, the spelling will change. Now I don't want to confuse anybody and I'm not really going to get into great detail. Maybe I'll do a lesson on stem changes but I learned these vowels without knowing what stem changes even were. I just remember the, the vowel, I remember what it conjugated into, and it was a lot more simple, uh, a lot less stressful on the brain. Um, that's why I'm not going for the classical university or classroom type approach of how a professor would teach all the different stem changes of all the different words. You don't need to know that shit. You just need to know what, what it changes into, remember it, and then as you use it and uh, as you practice more, it'll become more natural for you to remember exactly what that verb is, how it's spelled, what it changes, what's the other verbs. Uh, an example I can think of is the, the, another verb of um, AR verb, uh, means to show. Mostrar is the verb to show. Well, if I were to say, show me, it changes to a U, it's muestra me would be show me, and if I'm going to show you, it would be me voy a mostrarte. So it's conjugated differently for you than it is for me. I just uh, didn't know anything about the stem changes. I just remembered that, okay, in that present form, when it's conjugated for, for, from you to me, it changes from an O to a U. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, in the, in the present is llegó, I arrived, okay? If I, I, I have arrived or I arrived is, is uh, yo llegué, I've arrived. You call up your friend, you're at the train station and say yo, <laughs> literally, I would say yo in English, but in Spanish you wouldn't say yo because that means I. But I would just say hey, yo llegué, or llegué, simplemente I arrived. Llegaré. Uh, I will arrive. So tomorrow, uh, yeah, I'm on the train. Uh, I'm gonna arrive tomorrow. Uh, Llegaré mañana. Okay. Now, you can you can say I will arrive tomorrow simply in one word. Llegaré. I will arrive. Everybody knows what it means. And tomorrow. I can also say the same thing without using that verb. I can say me voy a llegar. I am going to arrive and then throw in tomorrow. Me voy a llegar mañana. So that's two different ways of saying the same thing. And this is the whole point of these lessons is to teach you the most basic way of saying the, the, the same exact thing that has 50 different ways of saying in Spanish. So in that case, if you're saying, I want to arrive, I'm going to arrive tomorrow to a buddy, you can say, llegaré mañana. Two words, I will arrive tomorrow. Very shit simple. Or you can say, me voy a llegar mañana. Now that just means tomorrow, 
but it doesn't mean tomorrow morning. If you're going to say, I'm going to arrive tomorrow, in the morning, you have to say mañana twice. Because mañana can mean tomorrow or it can mean in the morning. It depends on how it's used. So in that case, you'd say, me voy a llegar mañana por la mañana, for the morning. <laughs> so it's another classic example how someone can say, oh yeah, tomorrow means, uh, 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 mañana means tomorrow. And someone else can say, no, I thought mañana meant morning. Well, they're both right. It means both. It depends on how it's used. Moving on. You arrive right now. Llegas. Llegas. Okay. You uh, you already arrived. You know that. Llegaste. You know you're you're again uh, you're showing up and you're meeting a friend uh, at the bar. They said they're taking a taxi. You just got there. You just say, hey, llegaste. Have you already arrived? Um, and they said. In that example, they said, no, 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 I'm, I'm still in traffic. And then your next question is, well, when will you arrive? You can say, llegarás, in one word, when will you arrive? Or you can say, cuando llegarás, when will you arrive? Um, for him or her, he arrives, él llega, or ella llega, she arrived, or he, ella, Llegó. Now notice another accent. It's llegó. It's not just llegó. It's llegó. Um, because look at the difference here. Because you just say llegó, and I hope to God I pronounce it right the first time. <laughs> I said it. Llegó is I am arriving right now. But llegó, it's he or she arrived in the past. So you got. Llego and llegó. Uh, llegará. Again, emphasis on the A. Llegará. He or she will arrive. Uh, and I, I'm sure you're seeing the, the, the same pattern here. Llegamos. You know, we're arriving now. Llegamos. We arrived in the past. Same example before. How do you know when you're arriving now? We're arriving now, or we already arrived? It's in the context we're talking about. Hey, ahora llegamos. Now we arrive, or anoche llegamos. Llegamos. Anoche. Last night we arrived. And llegaremos. Llegaremos. We will arrive. They llegaron. We, we arrived. Llegan. And llegarán. They will arrive. Before we get on to our last example here, I just want to point out uh, something worthy, worthy of note is um, I want you to take a note, first of all, with the ending here of the O, second, uh, the ending here with the S, third, the ending with the A, fourth, the ending MOS. And last but not least, the ending with N. These are all indicators and they're pretty much all the same in all the verbs, uh, AR, ER, and IR verbs. There's one commonality, it's how, how the, the trend of how they're put together. Um, usually, most of the time, when a verb ends in no, you're thinking already it's, it's, it's for, for me, for, for, for me as the, the first person, uh, and it's present, continuous. Um, and I also, well, we'll stick with the example of the present. Uh, every single time, don't quote me 100% on that because I have to think, but 9 times out of 10 or 99 times out of 100, when a verb ends in S or a, a word ends in S, then uh, most of the time, it's for the second person. So, um, you know, in the, in the case of hablas, as soon as you hear that, as soon as you see the S, okay, we're, th we're talking second person continuous. So we have ending in an O, usually, first person continuous. Ending in S, second person continuous. 
The trick about L, A, I, or Usted, you've got three, three subjects here, no one. You can eliminate all of those if you remember the simple rule. L, A, I, and Usted is always conjugated the same way as second person uh, for you, minus the S. So whatever it is for the, the continuous for S, you just drop the S and you're, and you're left with the A. And you can see the example uh, here with hablas and habla, hablarás and hablará. It's uh, a, for, the, for the present and the future, it's the same minus the S. Uh, in the past, for the third person, that's when it changes. That's when it's not the same as the, the second person. But you can easily knock off these two to remember. If you can remember how to conjugate second person, uh, a, a present continuous and future, you will automatically know how to conjugate the third person, present and, uh, and, and definitive future, but just knocking off the S. In uh, um, most of all the verbs, when something ends in an MOS, MOS, or you'll see NOS, NOS is another conjugation of that, automatically get your brain into thinking about we. So, but then as soon as you see that first, you can knock off there talk about we, and then you look at the root, the uh, first part, uh, you can usually guess the indicative. Habla will be habla. So hablar most would be to speak, conjugated the subject as we. We speak. And then you just look at the, uh, the, um, the trend when it's remos, when it's the long one, it's future, because look at uh, the future for, for, for me, I will speak, it's hablaré, it's in the future. So basically nosotros in the future is basically built up of hablamos, we, but they, they in the future they added the same re as, as the, the I up there, so it's hablaremos. So it gives you a hint when you see that one uh, who it is talking about, the MOS is we, and the remos is the same as the hablaré, so it's the future. Again, past and continuous of this, it's just look for the other word in the sentence that's only indicate the time, whether it happened before or in the future. And then the trademark with the N, just adding uh, an N and ran. So if you see ron or ran or an, automatically think about ellos or ustedes. It's a they and it's conjugated based on the indicative verb and the ending the, with a ran or an or ran, then you know it's them. You're talking about plural. Um, it's just like, for example, if you were to say in the, in the informal to a buddy, como estas? How are you? Como estas? Well, if you meet your two friends and it's not, you're not talking singular anymore, you're, you want to say, hey, how's it going, guys? It's como están? Because you're, now you're talking about them. How, how, how's it going to your friends? So you say, como están? Same as they, here. It's, it's pluralizing it. So, easy to remember.